Okay, let's start with a potentially good circadian lighting spectra for daytime use. There could be, I, I took three examples which are popular in the market as of today. So starting with uh, this spectrum that has like a double blue peak, one at 450 nanometer and the other one around like 480 nanometer to increase the circadian stimulus by having more spectral power density around this cyan region. And in terms of the MP ratio, the melanopic uh, photopic ratio, obviously if you have a peak around like 480 nanometer cyan region, this is gonna be the highest MP ratio LED solution. And in terms of lifetime, I don't see any reason that the first and second spectrum will be so different. However, making use of high energy near UV pump light, you have a very high chance of degrading your packaging material much faster than when you use conventional blue dyes for the pump. These three are possible candidates for daylight use. And I'm gonna look at a few spectrums for nighttime use. So starting from a conventional warm white LED, I have another solution that make use of narrow bandwidth green phosphor in order to reduce the spectral power density around the cyan region pumped by blue dye. So I put like inverse MP ratio on the top of this spider web charts because the purpose here is to reduce the uh, MP ratio. In this case, the third one tops and uh, it's been followed by the second one closely. However, conventional warm white LED is not as efficient. And uh, likewise, lifetime, these two are kind of similar. However, the near UV will have a little bit of penalty. CRI-wise, these two are good, and uh, in this case, it's almost kind of impossible to have it uh, at a high CRI because we are eliminating significant portion of the visible light. DLC 5.0 demands that indoor lighting should have CRI over 80 and R9 over zero, and then it may be uh, an issue when we want to have the, you know, a really good circadian lighting solution that's kind of compromising with existing standards in the lighting industry. So we looked at the pros and cons of each different approaches and then we picked um, these two technologies for daylight and nighttime lighting. So we make use of secondary blue peak for the daytime use and uh, we eliminate the cyan gap by using you know, uh, narrow bandwidth screen but with uh, conventional blue dye in order to compromise the figures of merits of these LEDs and then we made it into like a popular 30-30 form factor package and then performed some clinical tests out of this. So the goal is that we want to restore our disturbed circadian rhythm represented by the melatonin level um, as a function of the time of the day. And we want to make it a little bit like this light gray. The thing that I presented today is to how we manipulate the uh, circadian entrainment effect by uh, creating spectrum, uh, which is eff effective in, in controlling the cyan uh, spectral power density, while uh, we maintain moderate balance between other figures of merit of an LED uh, so that I showed you, like efficacy, lifetime, and color quality, blue light hazard, those stuff. So uh, we, we really don't aim to bring the sunlight into uh, indoor because when you go outside, you like to wear sunglasses for some reason. You like to wear uh, like some sunblock. And for, for that reason, I, you know, our company don't pursue that direction.
There's a minor detail that I might like to discuss with you a little further is that um, it's not about the daytime light, it's about nighttime light. By completely eliminating the blue cyan region of the spectrum, I, I wasn't able to get a decent color quality out of the LED. Um, I couldn't achieve even, you know, minimum 80 CRI by doing that and the color point was of the NZ quadrant so way up there so <laughs> there, there must be some compromisation of the uh, circadian performance as well as the you know conventional <coughs> conventional uh, figures of merit for general lighting so the ethical question that we have for some new spectral tuning may arise to some extent. However, it'll go away over time. As long as we don't, we don't really abuse the power of the spectral tuning in a, in a negative way, intentionally. I think um, that's why there are like a standardization bodies, including, you know, IES, CIE, UL, Everybody are looking at the proper ways of, you know, using this spectral tuning. So your question goes to a cases where I um, had, had like, a, you know, nighttime workers and the employer intentionally putting like a very awakening, you know, daytime lighting for a nighttime shift in order to boost up the immediate performance of the workers. The ethical questions would go that way, that we should wait a little longer for uh, the whole industry and academia reaches some agreement on the ethical side of that you know, lighting instrument. That's, that was my response. However, what I'm going to talk about is that from LED industry, the components, the LED components for circadian or related functional lighting are pretty much ready. And you can choose those components for your research, some practices. So please come to us and we are ready to help. Thank you very much for attention.